academic publishers and journals. They are by far the sketchiest thing in academia and no one wants to talk about them. They are parasites sucking money away from actual research. They charge massive fees to research institutions to access the journals. They charge massive fees for publication in some of their journals and they get most of their editing work and their peer review process done for free by academics who donate their time and this is a massive, massive problem because it is a for-profit company that is taking away research money in like real terms. So let's have a look. So I found over here this really awesome article and it's just uh, based on this against parasite publishers. So essentially here we can see that in 2019 it corresponded with 28 billion dollars worth of money and revenues that are in line with Netflix, uh, Netflix or the international music industry. So here's some of the facts and figures. This is the revenue of the top uh, publishing companies in 2020. You can see that it's a massive amount of money. Now here's the thing. This is the operating margin of the same year. Taylor and Francis, 40%. 40%, that is better than Apple, Google, and Amazon. And you're asking yourself, well, why do they have such great uh, profit margins? Well, they are stealing labor from academics. So for example, as an academic, I would receive requests to peer review stuff and I would do it. I've done it maybe sort of like 10 times throughout my career as a postdoc. I would give detailed feedback on the paper. And I mean detailed. It would take me a couple of hours to read, critique, uh, put all the paperwork back in, send off an email. It's not a small amount of work. So these profit margins are based on free labor from academics. Why do we do it to ourselves? So not only do professors have to give free labor to these journals, but they also uh, charge for publishing. They're getting money from everywhere. So Nature, over $10,000 to publish in there, $5,000 for The Lancet. Wiley, uh, this is a, 19, a 2019 average, $2,000 plus $1,800. Quantum is only $489 and that's because they actually outsource all of their stuff for free to the academics. That is so sketchy and we just ignore it. And that's I think because if we can get a paper in one of these really prestigious journals, it can make or break a career. So it's like academic gambling and people who are taking advantage of us as academics gambling are just reaping the rewards. The journals are just taking all the money. And remember that when you get a grant from uh, a grant funding body to do research, a lot of this money, nearly sometimes $10,000 of that money will go just for publishing in these journals. So they are literally taking away money, billions of dollars every year, $28 billion um, of revenue pro approximately every single year away from research. A pointless expense that could actually have that money diverted directly back into research. Why do we allow this to happen? Arguably, academia is a pyramid scheme. And what I mean by that is you have a professor at the top whose career relies on them getting postdocs, PhD students, master's students, undergraduates to work in their research group. All of the kudos and academic kind of like power gets squeezed up to the top of the pyramid and it flows upwards to the professor. And so their career really relies on convincing other people to join academia and their research lab. Without them, their career is absolutely sort of like in shambles because you need a constant flow of fresh new ideas and people to work on your ideas in the lab. And so this structure makes it really, really uncomfortable to kind of work under because you've just got the person at the top reaping all the rewards from the efforts of the people below them. As a postdoc, I felt a pressure to kind of like lie to PhD students a little bit and be like, yeah, look, doing all this is great. You know, isn't research fun? And that's because I relied on their work as well as you know, the professor. So you had the professor at the top who relied on postdocs to do stuff. The postdocs relied on PhD students to do stuff. And this is a ever increasing sort of like body of people that you need to keep that publication uh, record ticking over. And so we ignore that 
And we ignore that the only real person to benefit from this is the tenured professor at the very top. And that's because the next sketchy thing I want to talk about is the increased casualization of the academic workforce. More and more, people are on shorter contracts. There are a few dinosaurs in a number of universities that are tenured. Tenured means they can just do whatever they want and they will not be fired. Unfortunately, for younger academics, that is becoming rarer and rarer. We are seeing academics become casualized. Short-term contracts means they have no stability, they have no sort of future um, sort of guarantee that they will have a job. You can spend years and years working on short-term contracts only to find at some point there is no money to keep you on a project or you cannot find your own money from a, from a funding body to keep your research going and therefore you are out. You are up the creek without a paddle. You know what creek I mean. Um, and the thing is, is that we all just kind of accept that this will happen. And it's absolutely insidious because the people that make it, they're like, oh, the cream will rise to the top. They see it like some sort of weird natural selection process when in fact the efforts, your efforts as an academic, it means nothing to your success, really. It's about luck, it's about being in the right place at the right time with the right ideas and with the right opportunities to find funding. The universities are getting away with taking stability away from academics or for the pursuit of, you know, increasing their hunger, I guess, to get funding. And if you can't prove that you're able to get funding, you're out on your own. So that is something that is super sketchy, that is getting worse and worse for as, as far as I can see, and we're not doing anything about it. It's time to revolt. I, like, it's, for me, it's almost time that we start a mass protest. Unpaid labor. Academia, universities rely on a huge amount of unpaid labor. Sure, you get your you know, yearly amount of money, you get your uh, monthly paycheck, but how much is that paycheck actually worth per hour considering the amount of effort that academics put in in overtime. You know, the average work week is whatever, like just under 40 hours a week, but there is so much more that goes into academia that is unpaid. The late nights in the lab, the late nights writing papers, the weekends writing papers, the weekend writing emails, the weekends just doing everything. And you cannot survive in academia without doing those things. The demands on academics are increasing from the university, the admin requirements, from applying for grants, for publishing your work, for supervising students. It is all a massive amount of work dealing with people, uh, processes, paperwork. A lot of it is done in the supervisor, the professors, the academics own time. And there is a huge amount of unpaid labor. The university is getting the benefits of free labor from a number of academics. And they're not gonna say anything. The system's working perfectly well for them. So why would they change? It's super sketchy. Academics should stop doing overtime and just see what happens to the university because it would crumble without the insane amount of extra work that academics need to provide to the university. And uh, that's just to keep their job. That's just to keep their head above water. That isn't even excelling. So that is super sketchy if you ask me. So there we have it. There are the four biggest sketchiest things that I think academia, the university and research has, and we all just ignore it. It is a massive, massive problem. and. We all just accept that this is just what it is. And if you fail, then it's your fault because you weren't able to be successful in the system we set up. Considering how many people fail, it's clearly the system that is at fault, not the sort of like two or 3% that actually sort of flourish in academia. It is a terrible system. It is super sketchy in so many ways. And there are parasites like academic publishers that are literally taking money out of research um, bank accounts and putting it in to their own pockets. Thank you very much. We'll have the free labor for the publishing. The universities will have the free labor from all of the overtime and the extra work that academics do in just to keep their heads above water. It's all super sketchy. It's just incredible. It's incredible we've let things get this far. The system doesn't change and it won't change unless the academics start standing up to it. And we don't.
because we're too scared, because the people that have made it in the academic system, the people that power just assume that they are the, the most successful because they did everything right and it's like a meritocracy. And if you don't do exactly what they did, you know, which has a massive amount of luck that, you know, you're a failure and you deserve to fail. That needs to change because the system's working for very few people. It's not working for the majority of people. And it's certainly not the best use of research funding. No, there we are. It's a bit serious today, wasn't it? Ooh. So there we have it. Let me know in the comments what you think. What are some other sketchy things that happens in academia that we all just seem to accept? I'd love to hear them. There are more ways that you can engage with me. First of all, head over to academiainsider.com. That's where I've got my eBooks, the Ultimate Academic Writing Toolkit, as well as the PhD Survival Guide. I've got the Insider Forum, a blog that's grown out as well. It's perfect. And if you want free stuff, remember to sign up to my newsletter. My newsletter, uh, when you first sign up, you'll get five emails over about two weeks, everything from the tools I use, the podcasts I've been on, how to the perfect abstract and more. It's exclusive content available for free. So go and sign up now. And then you'll get the odd email probably like once every six months at the moment from me after that. Um, but it will always be important information to make academia work for you. All right, then I'll see you in the next video.